This video was brought to you by Elbilmerk, a bedroom planner stored by Ken Power and Bill Componenter. Yo, what's up? Today I'm gonna try to measure the battery capacity of this Polestar 4. It's 100 kilowatt hour gross capacity and 94 kilowatt hour net according to EV database, but I still haven't measured it because the car software is so buggy. We're gonna do one last attempt. Okay, so um, I will go on a trip. First, I have to do my uh, kindergarten run. Yo, what's up? Give me five. <laughs> uh, so flink. So flink. Okay, one, one, one. Oh, yeah. You see, this is a Cybex. Yelly. Cybex here on the T. Yelly. So she uh, fits uh, fine there. Yelly. Yeah. <laughs> I have to go to the kindergarten first. But whatever, you know, it doesn't matter what I do. All I need to do is to discharge a battery. And then preferably with cruise control working. Are you okay, baby? It's Ben. Let's go. <laughs> okay, so now let's see. We just drive. I have charged the car to 100%. It claims 420 kilometers. 420 is the answer. So I reset the trip manual, but also trip since the last charge has been reset. So now we'll try to figure out how well how big the battery is, right? Um, it should be simple. Hopefully we don't have to re reset anything. Well, I should test if we have cruise control working. Maybe we're driving too slow. Okay, we have to drive faster probably. Let's go over here. Uh, yeah, let's uh, get over to some higher speed uh, zones first. Cruise control is working. That's good. Head of display is working. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh shit. All right, we have the kindergarten. The new Stormbad jacket. Oh, you're so cute. You're so cute. <laughs> okay, it's better. Let's go. Go to the kindergarten. Yeah. Yeah. So here it is, man. You know, after racing two children for a while now. I have big respect for the... Uh, Isabel, come on, let's go, let's go. Come on, pa, pa, pa. I really have big respect for, uh, for the kindergarten workers. They are really underappreciated, underpaid. They do one very important job, which is to take care of your beloved ones. It's not simple, you know. You have to know how they are, how they prefer it, with sleeping schedule, eating schedule, what clothes to wear, uh, diaper, yeah. We bring diapers also here. See, we have to refill diaper today. They do all that stuff so that you can do your important work in the daytime, right? And then do they get all the upgrades here? New toys? No. I used to work in the government. Konkurrence de Syne and SSB and the Statistics Norway and the Competition Authority. Yeah, there's a... There's a... A hybrid making some noise <coughs> and up in the government they would get the upgrades or the, the the money from the government when they need to upgrade something or refurbish something but over here <coughs> at the kindergarten they will be the last one to get anything which is a shame right Isabel manga okay let's go Isabel yeah it's too boring now come on let's go all right Isabel has been dropped off Man, I have to say, the Pulsar 2 looks awesome from this angle. Actually, it looks pretty awesome from any angle. Huh? Look at this. The beast from the east. Yeah. Okay, let's get going. And now we just drive. So, um, yeah, we are at 98% battery. We're just going to discharge it as low as possible. Because I have another appointment at uh, noon in roughly three hours yeah i have to go to um uh well health sensor they call it but oh yeah i can change lane let me see auto lane change should work here yeah look at that everything works now oh nice but i don't know if you see it i can see it uh if i zoom in there kind of okay i feel like the steering wheel is vibrating um my butt feeling says that one of the rear wheels are unbalanced 
So uh, if Polestar watches this, maybe they can figure out. But okay, uh, I already felt it uh, when I picked up the car. But okay, we will drive at least to uh, Rudshögda and back again. Uh, so just try to discharge the battery. We can do this in several rounds, no problem. Maybe, but maybe overnight there will be some self-discharge. But uh, as long as we just uh, go uh, back to back now and just keep driving and discharge the battery, then we should be able to figure out do we have 94 kilowatt hour here or not. And then how is Mjösen today? Oh, fairly calm. What about the windsock? Okay, we have a slight tailwind. Yeah. Consumption so far is 266 watt hour per kilometer. Hmm. And I might go all the way to Moorwarm instead of Rudsog, that is slightly further down the road and then back. So just have to try to be back home around 11.30. That's in two hours from now. So I can travel far in two hours. We are now at 90% and let's check for linearity. Uh, based on how many uh, kilowatt hour we consume now, it could seem like we have 106 kilowatt hour, which is of course not true. So this means that um, uh, the battery is more energy dense at the top versus the bottom. This is uh, somewhat common. So um, yeah, we can also check further down the road how it goes. Wow, it's nice and beautiful over here in Hama. But you know, after driving this car for almost a week now, I've actually gotten used to this mirror. So, you know, the problem I complained about in the beginning was that um, when I focus far here and I look in the mirror here, I don't have to refocus. But then if I look at this mirror or screen rather, then I have to focus close. So I have to go from focus far here to focus close. But it took me only a couple of days and especially after the 1000 km challenge with lots of driving, then my brain got used to it. So now it's no problem. My brain just knows that, okay, if you go from here to here, you have to refocus. You go from here to here, you have to refocus. And the same, you go from here to here, you have to refocus and no problemo. Maybe the only problem is once you move over to another car, then you struggle again. Man, this is always annoying. I go from 90 to 70 kilometers per hour and then I press this four times, one, two, three, four. And it regulates it two of those clicks. <laughs> Uh, no, no, come, come on. Yes, yes, finally. We are down to 60% and according to trip meter now, it looks like we have around 103 kilowatt hours. So it was 106 earlier. You see, the number will just keep dropping as the state of charge keeps dropping. So, well, um, test, test will still take a while. We'll just try to go for cleavage maybe. I'm not sure. We'll see how much traffic it is, but it shouldn't be too much now in the morning hours. So, yeah. This, bar, this battery is still quite big, so it takes a while to uh, go down to low, yeah, almost zero. We are down to 40%, and then according to the trip meter, we should have around 101 watt, uh, kilowatt hour. So yeah, as we go down now, we get lower and lower uh, energy. So um, maybe we end up in 94. All right, we're back home now. We have 21% left, and then we're done 300 kilometers. So based on 261 watt hour per kilometer, we have around 99 kilowatt hour. Wow. Uh, okay, let's um, yeah, let's do the stuff first. I have to exchange some car seats and get ready for uh, Axel this time. All right, we're good to go. Axel, yo, what's up? <laughs> He's five months old now. Wait. Yeah, roughly five months old. Look at that. Huh, you're getting big. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Let's go. Let's go. Zup, you see, he uses uh, Cloud T. This is the one that uh, Isabel used before. So it's from newborn until roughly two years old. Okay, let's go. So usually around once per two months or so, you have to go to this uh, health station, Hälsestation. Maybe there's some uh, vaccine or some health check. Yeah, just routine with babies. Right, back home again. I swapped the car seat. This is for Isabel, so I'm ready. But yeah, this is, by the way, this is a golden strip. They actually call it Swedish gold. Yeah, if you get the performance, you get the whole thing, big fat gold thing here. But uh, yeah, okay, so we are now at uh, 19%, 79 kilometers of range left. Yeah, trip meter, uh, yeah, okay, whatever. Let's uh, keep driving. 
we are down to 5% and um, we're 22 kilometers away from home but uh, GOM claims 21 kilometer hmm it was looking better uh, before and then I had to slow down now it seems like I have to slow down even more so this is probably a result of that uh, the state of charge uh, or is it not linear right the scale yeah and then it drops faster and faster towards the end so I probably have to slow down even more now just to go back home I, I can always just top up at Ayonti Dal here but uh, yeah we can just go home instead uh, I'm not going to test anything else after this uh, test anyway so we are almost done with the test now and uh, we're down to two percent and even though there's no visible power limit on this display I'm actually struggling to maintain speed up here I'm flooring it oh shit come on don't die uh, but uh, really a hundred kilowatt hour battery with this power limit it already started at five percent hmm okay but we need to go deep to get the most accurate result Oh, let's, ac let's accelerate! <laughs> this is the maximum acceleration. What? We even have downhill. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Hope the car doesn't die. Come on, come on. We have to build up momentum here. Come on! Build up the speed. Okay, we're gonna go to Ayonti Dal, right ahead there. Yeah, so um, this should be fine. Oh, 1%! Okay, okay. I think that's deep enough. Just have to build up momentum, downhill. Alright, finally the test is done. 370.9 kilometers with 257 watt hour per kilometer and then one percent. That equals to 96.3 kilowatt hour. Wow. Um, actually when they did the range test a couple of days ago, I estimated 96 kilowatt hour based on the numbers uh, yeah with the trip meter that was messed up. So, um, but then we also have to take into account that there were a little bit of idle consumption, but it seems like idle consumption actually counts in the trip meter. But then also the, um, the, the increased heat loss because we were hammering it. So uh, I suspect that it might be actually 96.8 kilowatt hour. That is the best guess we have. So um, yeah, this should be quite uh, accurate. Uh, EV database claim 94 kilowatt hour. The reason why we have 96 could be because this is initial battery capacity that you will lose after maybe three to six months and then we'll be down to 94 kilowatt hour. But yeah, let's uh, try to charge now on Ionity. Let's see what kind of speed we'll get here. Oh, he's ramping up. Oh wait. Or, ah, uh, no, he's doing the Chinese thing. See, I've seen this before with other Chinese cars, is that uh, if you go deep, you will only receive low charging speed. In this case, 84 kilowatts. And uh, yeah, I also saw this when I did the range test a couple of days ago. It was also receiving around 80 something, 85, 88 kilowatts. So this will take now several minutes before it goes to 200, hopefully. But the last time we had to wait until 8% until we got some proper speed. Hey, huh? What? Why did the screens just go black now? What? Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> That's weird. I'm just sitting here, you know? Okay, we're still waiting. 4%, still going at around 80 kilowatt. Oh yeah, now it ramps up. After three minutes, we get faster speed. Wait, this screen is kaput. Okay, but let's see now. Do we get 200 kilowatt? Uh, I didn't preheat the battery, but it seems like the preheating is not working according to the range test I did, but also the 1000 km challenge. But it seems like maybe after driving for so many hours and hammering it, then the battery should be hot enough. So we should be able to get a little bit over 200 kilowatts. And this time actually it ramped up faster. Last time it, <laughs> it hit the high speed at 8%. You see? Yeah, all good. You see we're taking almost 500 amp. And this car can actually maintain the 200 kilowatt for a while. So uh, it means that to get the best speed, you should use Ionti or Tesla because Ionti and Tesla, they can output 500 amp continuous all day long. Whereas the other chargers, uh, they usually have this uh, boost function where you get 500 amp for a limited time, maybe six minutes. I also heard 11 minute timer, but it also is not only timer based, uh, like hypercharger, you know, the, the, it also depends on battery temp, on char, plug temperature or cable temperature but at least on Ionity and supercharger they are liquid cooled so they can output 500 amp no problem all day until the car cannot take more what, what, what the heck is going on here we're taking around 50 kilowatt 
uh, according to the charging test I did uh, a couple of days ago, we're supposed to get 200 kilowatt until 24%. And now it goes up again. Look at that. Now we're taking 170 kilowatt. And it goes up. Uh, that's a bit strange. But this time I have heater on. And like most cars, the heater uses a heat pump. And then the AC unit is now used for heating of the cabin rather than cooling of the battery. So the battery might be overheating right now. That's why it has this weird ramp. Now we're at uh, around 120 kilowatts. But uh, yeah, and then it ramps up. But not uh, 400. Uh, no, it was at 450 amp. We don't see that anymore. Hmm. Let me see. Let me try something here. Can I do this? And then go to parking. And then keep okay. Now keep climate on is uh, grayed out, possibly because we have too low state of charge. But that's also kind of silly. In the Tesla, this was also the case before that you needed 20% minimum for to use keep climate on. But they changed it so that if you did, <laughs> see now it's available. Yeah, 20%. But the Tesla, they are smart enough to figure out that as long as you plug in at the supercharger, you can use keep climate on even at 1%. If we do this now, I'm gonna keep the cabin nice and warm. And the battery also nice and warm. Oh, we are at least 160 kilowatts, right? And there's, a, there's an electric truck here charging. I saw the truck unhooked the trailer. And then, of course, he comes over here to charge. Let me see. No, I'm, I'm taking 147 kilowatts. I'm going to check out how fast the truck is charging. What kind of truck is this? It's a Scania. Ooh, ooh, let me see. You see, he's charging way faster than me. At 77%, he's taking 350 kilowatt. Damn, these Scania's are charged fast. I heard that they can charge at 350 kilowatt all the way to, uh, I don't know, over 90%. What? I'm down to 106 kilowatts. Okay, uh, I think this is quite clear indication that uh, the AC or the heat pump for heating the cabin is messing up for the battery cooler. It is actually, unfortunately, quite common for EVs to work like this. Korean cars like uh, EV6, Ioniq 5 does the same thing. Um, even the BMW does this. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I mean, what, what they're supposed to do? Well, when you are charging, what you're supposed to do is to go here and then climb it and then turn off turn off heater yeah even if it's minus 10 degrees outside you need to turn off the heater or not be in the car yeah then you charge the fastest unless it's a tesla because tesla has alien technology then they will actually instead of <laughs> not kind of silly instead of taking the heat from the battery and dump it out tesla will take the heat from the battery and then put it in the cabin yeah octovalve you know but anyway, the test is done. I finally figured out how many kilowatt hour we have. So that would be what goes into the range table. So if you watch a rain test and you were wondering where did I get that number from? Well, it is from this test that I had to do several days after. And then quick explanation here. Why couldn't I figure out this earlier? Well, there was a problem that I couldn't use cruise control. It was during the rain test, but also during the 1000 km challenge. Cruise control simply didn't work. I tried to reset, I tried to do everything. It didn't work until I left the car for about 10 minutes and came back and then suddenly cruise control work. And then it's somewhat important to use cruise control because I want to have as consistent run as possible when I do the 1000 km challenge, but also the range test. And also I haven't found a way to use speed limiter here that could be a workaround but yeah so that's why when you reset the car with the with the, these two buttons here you, you use this and this you know simultaneously um what happens is that in here suddenly the trip here is messed up so it actually jumps back to the previous state that it was uh, before you left the car or something so so suddenly uh, the trip would not be 370 it would be something like let's say 250 you know before I did the something like that so that's why the, the whole measurement I did earlier was messed up and I couldn't figure out exactly how it was but uh, at least now we know so anyway that's gonna be it for now I hope you guys enjoyed this video as always thank you for watching and talk to you later and thank you for letting me beta test the car <laughs> and beta test the software